Welcome to the shooting show. This week we're in the Isle of Skye, hind stalking, plus if you've ever wondered what to do with a rifle straight out of the box, Andy Chatterton from the stalking school shows us how. Byron's undertaken a long trek north to the Isle of Skye. It's full of fantastic vistas and plentiful game. The views are stunning. It's a wild country rising from the sea to broken tops with tumbling waters shedding across the land. It makes for great stalking country. As head stalker and Skye's only traditional sporting estate, Scott McKenzie has vast tracts of land to cover. It's the hind season and he's slowly making his way through the cull. Scott sets off in the Argo to get into position quickly. Knowing the estate as well as he does, he has a particular area in mind to target Hines, and after loading the magazine and making the rifle safe, he is ready to head across the hill. The weather has been hard so far, but today looks to be staying dry. A strong wind is present, but this can be used to Scott's advantage. Progress is slow and steady. This land has a lot of dips and hollows, so every inch has to be scanned for likely signs of activity. In the distance, a weather front is clearly moving in, but Scott presses on. He is careful to approach each horizon with care. The sheltered face could easily be harbouring deer. Eventually some hinds are spotted in the distance. Scott picks his way strategically, making the best use of the land. He needs to close the gap between him and the deer without giving the game away. Constantly checking the hinds' movement, he cuts the distance between them to allow him to get in position for a clear and safe shot. We'll just push on a wee bit further. See if we can get into them. She's looking directly at us. Everything looks good, but just as Scott is ready to shoot, the deer spook. The opportunity is lost. It's not the end of the story though and Scott moves further into the estate and barely any time has passed before a small group of hinds and a stag are spotted. There's a group down there, we can assess them further once we get into a decent position. How far away are they? A few hundred yards in here. This group of deer are in a good location to stalk into and Scott once again carefully assesses the best approach into a shooting position. For such an experienced stalker as Scott, the terrain provides an easy approach, but he's still careful to close the gap without disturbing the stag or hinds. I think we'll drop down to go onto this knoll in front of us, I think. Scott crawls the final few metres, picks his target and settles himself in for the shot. As he will be taking the shot from a prone position, Scott deploys his bipod as quietly as possible. Scott takes the shot and the hind drops just out of camera shot. I, I had to shoot at a slight angle there because I think they were just catching our wind with it swirling about. Scott, can you tell me a little bit about the estate we've been stalking on today? Yeah, it's uh, Ellen Irman Estate. It's based down the south end of Skye. It's around about 23,000 acres in size. 
uh, and the sort of sport that we offer on the estate is uh, stalking uh, for reds and some roe, um, fishing and woodcock shooting, predominantly wild sport. Uh, most of the, the, the sport that's uh, provided on the state is advertised through CKD Guild Braiths. Uh, equally, you can find us on the internet. There is a website that tells you uh, what we can offer, what we can do. And how many stags are you taking off here um, a year? It's around about the 20 mark. Um, sometimes we, we do get a lot of uh, transient stags come in from neighbouring ground. So that uh, but that's the average figure for, for the estate per year. All the guests that I take out is part of a management cull. It's uh, not trophy driven. Um, and the estate is quite young in terms of development of the animals uh, over the last sort of 20 years uh, with a keeper before myself uh, doing the bulk of the work. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's good herd management more than trophy hunting. The hinds, again, we take out about up to 50, 50 plus. Um, so it's all a management plan. Today we've obviously been out, we've been successful with uh, bagging one hind as part of your, your cull plan. Can you talk me through the day just briefly? Yeah, uh, I wanted to check an area where the main of the rut uh, happens, um, just to see what was still hanging about up in the glen there. As we got to, onto the top, we decided to have a look in. We spotted a group of three hinds. Uh, decided to have a look at them closer, see if we could get in and uh, see what we could take. Um, we managed to get quite close, um, but unfortunately they just moved down uh, the, the burn towards us a wee bit more. Uh, and by the time we'd sort of crawling through the heather, uh, one of the hinds had heard something she not, didn't quite like, barked, and that was the end of that one they moved on from there uh, but we managed to see a, a quite a nice stag holding uh, a couple of hinds so we made uh, an approach into them and uh, we managed to take one of the two hinds that were with him. Now the hind that you shot was angling slightly away from us so it wasn't the classic broadside shot can you tell me how you went about taking that shot and why sometimes you can't wait for that perfect opportunity when you're culling? Yes uh, she was sort of facing away head turned back looking in our direction. Uh, it's not a type of shot I would allow a guest to take um, for obvious reasons. Um, but for myself as part, again, as part of a management plan, I'm confident in taking those sorts of shots. Uh, it just means just sort of quickly running through in your head the scenario how, where the bullet's going to enter and exit, just making sure first and foremost that the animal's going to be put down and she's, uh, it's going to be a nice, clean, swift kill. A satisfying job well done. It's time to head back to the larder. The day ends in a superb facility where the beast becomes prime venison, ready for export. Well, that's how to go stalking on the aisles, and now, the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. The Scottish Gamekeepers Association has urged the public not to be blinded by emotive language in the debate over bird poisoning. Independently verified figures showed bird crime at its lowest ever figure in 2011, but a new RSPB report has added four incidents to these figures, leading shooting organisations to question the statistics involved. SGA Chairman Alex Hogg said people have a right to question the RSPB stats, adding that only two cases of abuse were independently confirmed to the end of June 2012. Full story in the January issue of Modern Gamekeeping. Details of the 2013 Clay Shooting Classic have been announced. The 150 bird competition will take place on the 5th to the 8th of June, with the Gamekeepers and Services shoot on the Wednesday and the main event from Thursday to Saturday. Held at EJ Churchill in Buckinghamshire for the third year running, this year sees new sponsors Edgar Brothers, offering a Zolli Z Sport worth nearly £7,000 to the overall high gun, a Remington 1100 worth £1,700 to second place, a Hatsan Escort Extreme to each class winner, and a Hooglu 410 to the winners of Ladies, Veterans and Juniors. More in the January issue of Clay Shooting. The winners of the 2012 Purdy Awards for Conservation have been named. 
the Weardale Estate in Bishop Auckland, County Durham, took the Gold Award in recognition of the work the estate has done in heather moorland restoration. The large-scale project has boosted the number of native birds and has even seen the return of red squirrels to the area. The Silver Award went to Organic Farm in South Yorkshire and the Bronze Award went to the Westmoreland Wild Ballers Association. Are you paying your firearms licence fee correctly? Busk has warned shooters that it might not be as straightforward as you think. The organisation says that after the introduction of police and crime commissioners, police forces could now require payments into different accounts. According to Basque's firearms department, confusion over payment could lead to delays in processing applications, potentially leaving shooters without a licence. Firearms officer Matt Penning urged certificate holders and applicants to double-check their money was going to the right place. The finalists for the 2012 Countryside Alliance Awards have been announced. The Alliance has selected regional finalists for 10 regions across the UK in categories including local food, village shop, enterprise, butcher and start-up. Regional winners will be announced in January and will go on to represent their region in the national finals which are judged by a panel including Owen Patterson and Clarissa Dixon-Wright. That was the Shooting Show News. What I'm going to briefly go through is how to treat a new rifle, or certainly how I believe you should treat a new rifle. The rifle as it's there looks fine, but if you actually run your finger along it, there's a very fine layer of preservative on it. Now that preservative's all over it, including potentially between the action and the stock. So the first thing I'm going to do is pop the stock off. That's free, the magazine's out. Gentle pressure, and there it goes. I'll lay the stock there for a second. That's the action out. Right, so you can see, particularly here and here, these are critical bearing points for the action against the stock. All it takes is just dab it dry. So you can see on the ticker, they've got this separate recoil block, which mates into this slot in the bottom of the action. While you're in here, just check how firmly that's affixed to the stock. It should be a very nice snug fit, and this one is. There's no obvious sign of oil having seeped down the side of that, so I'm just going to leave that well alone as is. But because I'm going to treat this for the customer, what I want to do is actually remove the factory lubricant. You can get all kinds of, of proper gun products, but nothing beats straightforward normal brake cleaner. So switch into a clean piece of paper. You can just spray this all over the gun and drain it off, um, but you're already having to justify the new rifle purchase. If you take the varnish off the kitchen table as well, you could be heading for domestic problems. Outside done, what I now need to do is put a patch through the barrel. I'm using brake cleaner again to start with, and it just removes the stuff from the chamber. good tight patch that's the first and the only time with a rifle that the rod would go through it without me putting a bore guide in everything from now on in a bore guide will go in so it's protecting the action from the rod and the rod from the action and more importantly centering the rod as it goes down the barrel right that's had a minute to dry off Another patch, this time with a standard bore solvent, this one's Butch's. It's always very difficult, people always ask how many times do I patch, how many times do I run a brush through the barrel, and basically listen to what the barrel says, feel for how it feeds back through the rod. If you can feel resistance, or you can see lubricant or solvent on the patches, then you need to do more work. If it goes through free and easy and the patch is coming out completely dry, you're done. Now, the important thing with the bolts, they are factory lubricated, so they should be fine. So this is a personal choice. And also refer to your own instruction manual for the type of rifle you've got. Every rifle is slightly different. The T3 bolt can be a bit of a nightmare. So this is something to do only if you wish to do it 
and you're certain it's not going to invalidate a warranty or anything like that. And effectively, the bolt's cocked, and you'll see the tail end is in a notch that's holding it cocked. With the ticker, take a firm grasp and turn it about half a turn. Once you've done that, you can take the cover off the back. So I use the Torex wrench that comes with the Optilock mounts. You insert that between the tail end and the body there. And that must stay in there no matter what. Taking a hold of it, pull back on the spring and just rotate. So make sure that's pushed in and the bolt handle then comes out. Again, put it to one side safely. Keeping that in place and it's actually pinched by the pressure, the whole firing pin assembly then comes out. Or for an area like this that's going to be out of sight for most of its life, um, I give it a quick treatment with smooth coat, which is a moly based, um, it's effectively a moly lubricant that's held in a spirit suspension, so it will bond to the metal. So that's going to be the next step, now that's dry. Now the only bit that I'll go for a lube is you can see the back end of the firing pin where it goes through this bushing and just two drops of oil in there. This will dry out, it won't stay liquid. So it's still, it's not going to attract any debris or anything. Firing pin back in, that's lined up with there. This is now free and open again. That should line up, the bolt handles back in, and we can now put pressure on it and turn so it's locked. Now the only other things we'll do with the bolt is I'll give it a wipe with tough cloth, and when we actually put it back in, I'm just going to put a smear of grease on the back of the lugs. Just a drop on the engagement where it's going to join the firing pin. Drop either side of the bolt raceway. Bolt in once, just to truck carry the lubricant in. Bolt back out. Dab of grease. Again, this is a tough uh, a Century Solutions product, but any of the good gun greases or to push the automotive greases will do and it's just quite a hefty blob on the back of the lugs a smear on each side these are where it's going to ride in the raceway bolt back in and work it in two or three times and you've got the final bit is where the sear lever activates on the firing pin and just a smear of grease there. So stock, action. Now there's going to be a bit of jiggling because you've got to get the recoil lug in there to fit the slot in the action. So that's snug down. Keep the rifle vertical. A dab of lubricant on the thread. If the action screws are tightened to the correct pressure, torque, then they're not going to work loose readily, so you don't need thread lock on it. And the other important place is a dab of lubricant behind the head of the bolt. Long one in the back, short one in the front. Final check is look down on the barrel and make sure you've got an equal space either side of the stock so that the action is sat centrally where it's supposed to be. This one's going to have a moderator on it, so to be a dab of grease on the threads, and that's then ready to go. If you've used normal oil in the barrel, remember a dry patch before you shoot it, but otherwise that's now set up, ready for the scope moderator, and finally getting out the door to have a shoot with it. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching. We're out every Monday, 7.30pm UK time. This is The Shooting Show.